Come on. Boxer briefs, shorts, knickers, shanty, fundoshi, underwear. How did they really come about? Gruff and Tumble digs into the interesting and often hysterical origins of men's underwear. The first type ever was the loincloth, worn by ancient Egyptians. Known as a shanty, it was made from woven materials, commonly cotton, wrapped around the body several times and tied in the front. They're actually still worn today in some tropical areas of the world. In Japan, it was called a fundoshi. And in Hawaii, it was called a malo. The Romans had their version called the sublegaculum, which was made famous by the gladiators and actors of the time. Later on in Europe, the loincloth was replaced by looser clothing called braise, which the wearer stepped into. They had a button front flap called a codpiece, which allowed guys to urinate without having to take the garment off. King Henry VIII became the first stuffer, if you will, by adding extra material to his, which caused a trend of making larger and larger codpieces. They also used to stash valuables and jewels in their codpiece. Thus, we have the term protecting the jewels. The cotton gin made mass production possible, and people started buying garments instead of making it themselves. The Union suit became hot with its one-piece design and fireman's flap that covered the entire body. It was a precursor to Long John's, which was possibly named after the American boxer, the mighty John L. Sullivan, father of the celebrity boxing game as we understand it today. He used to wear a similar outfit in the ring to intimidate his opponents. This era also saw the invention of the jock strap, designed for bicyclists to protect the jewels riding the bumpy cobblestone roads of Boston, Mass. World War I soldiers were issued button front shorts as underwear. The buttons attached to a separate piece of cloth called a yoke sewn in the front with ties on the side for fit. In 1925, Jacob Gollum, founder of Everlast, designed elastic waist trunks to replace the leather belted ones then worn by boxers. Then in 1935, Coopers Incorporated sold the world's first briefs in Chicago. Designed by Arthur Niebler, these briefs had no leg sections and had the common Y-shaped overlapping fly. They dubbed the design the Jockey, since it offered the kind of support familiar in the jock strap. Jockey briefs were the hottest thing ever. 30,000 pairs were sold within three months of their introduction. In the late 40s, boxers started to gain popularity again. So the two styles, briefs and traditional boxers, competed with each other. Of course, the 1950s made underwear a fashion item in and of themselves, but the 70s and 80s brought the sexy. Advertisers stopped talking about comfort and durability and began selling pure and unadulterated sex appeal. Thanks, Jim. Uh. The 1990s brought the boxer brief. Hip hop had begun to influence everything on a global scale. The trailblazing style of its artists, culture, and fans spread the appeal of the boxer brief. Then Calvin Klein put Mark Wahlberg in a campaign. The underwear market is expected to reach 16 billion by 2025. Premium is the new standard today. Growing disposable income, preference for branded underwear with better fit, and true comfort are major factors fueling this demand. Yet a fraction of the brands out there right now make sizes larger than an XL. And across the country, the number of our fellow brothers that wear larger sizes continues to grow. There's a disconnect. Sizing is the new frontier in men's underwear. To be successful today, you need to design for reality and meet guys where they are at. Develop smart products that speak directly to how real size men live, work, and sweat. That's what we do. We make sophisticated underwear for grown-ass men. We are Gruff and Tumble.